Hey, welcome to uh, the third part of our episode on Pong. Yes, Pong is so complicated, it gets three parts. Um, today we're going to take a look at that palette function that had those blue glowing ball trails that were so awesome. And we'll talk about how I accomplished that. So let's remind ourselves what we are talking about. Okay, we were leaving the ball trail. Oh, yes, right, I'm slowing it down. Always slowing things down. One thousand, okay. So we were talking about how to, how this glowing blue trail worked. Because as we said before, there is no alpha channel. There's no opaque value or attribute or anything. Whoa. Oh man, that trail came right back onto us. It hit the very corner and I didn't see it. Okay. Um, and you only have 16 defined colors and you can't change the the intensity of any of the colors or so how did I make that blue glowing thing well I did it with the palette function as we saw here um, so we will explore this palette function all right let's do a new new thing so what I'm going to do is first off we are going to make some boxes we're going to make 16 boxes um, and we will draw a line from uh, okay let's make these x we're going to go x times now i have 480 divided by 16 30 let's make them 25 pixels each so um, and let's start, uh, no, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, okay. X times 25. Um, we'll make a line to X times 25 plus 20. Here we go. Uh, 24. Uh, oh no, I need a Y value. Sorry, folks. My X value, <laughs> you'll see what I'm doing in a minute. Uh, I'm trying to make a colored box if you can't. Uh, already see that uh, let's make a 24 by 24 colored box we're gonna make it color 16 and a box fill and of course that's an illegal function call because we need to go into screen 12 perfect you might say what the heck why is it white um, it's white because color 16 is white. I think color 17 is white too. I think everything, if I go 600, like if I do that, oh, that's an overflow. If I do color 6,976, anything over 15 is white. Uh, so let's make this. 0 to 15 and instead of there we'll go like that and there we go we have some boxes okay let's let's increase them a bit and we'll make them 240 I just want to be able to see them Whoops. Oh yeah, that was cool. There we go. I, um, <laughs> yeah, this looks like an old television broadcasting thing. Okay. So we have, um, all the colors here, our whole palette. Um, so we had a function before and I'm going to define this function again. I can never figure it out. I never remember it. So we're going to go 
over here. <sighs> I've seen that so many times. Come on, power. Uh, nope, okay, color, down. Where did I find it before? Details. Details, here we go. Color numbers and attributes. Ay, ay, ay. What, what, what in the world is happening? Oh, for crying out loud. Come on. Power. Color. Screen modes. Then I'm back into a cycle on screen, okay. I'll go into this. <laughs> I, I know I've, I've sung the praises of the Cubasic help file, but man, I tell you, sometimes it's really difficult. What's this? What's the capabilities? What's the screen mode? I feel, I feel like this isn't palette statement details. Oh my word. Color, array name. I think we finally found it in the palette statement. <laughs> Here we go. Wow, that took for freaking ever. Okay. Let me copy this. Thank you. Okay, we're going to make a function here. We're going to pass in some three values, a value for blue, a value for green, and a value for red. And this is the predefined function which determines uh, what you're able to do, the all the different attributes. So each of these values, whoops, blue, green, and red, can have a, you give it a value between 0 and 64. So not every number under the sun is, is going to constitute a color only only values that uh, this formula pops out so if we said for instance let's get rid of this stuff i'll just comment it out and we'll do some printing here let's uh print out what 10 you know 34 6 is what is that? That's the number 664,070. Like, woohoo. Isn't that awesome? Um, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything. It only means what the computer wants it to mean. Um, those colors are mapped to certain red, green, and blue values. So QBasic takes that, that number, in this case 664,070, and it knows how to interpret that. Um, and that actually is one of the 256,000 predefined or defined colors. Um, in screen 12, we have 256,000 possible colors, but only in 16 attributes. We only have 16 buckets. So this is how you say, I want to use this particular color in this color spectrum, um, but you got to put it in a bucket. And that's, that's, that's the thing. So that's what that means. Okay. Um, so our function defines a function. Right on. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to let's let's pick on the um, what what color what color should we pick on? Maybe that ah we'll keep we'll keep going on the blue on the on the left side there. So that is color one. Um, the, these are the fifteen colors that we have or the 16 with color zero. Color zero is black. It's right beside the, it's right beside, well, let's use color zero. Zero is a bucket. Okay. Um, so we're going to change the palette of zero. So let's, let's pick a color, which, which, uh, what color do we like? Well, let's go T, um, color string uh, let's just call it that equals oh, okay let's just give it some uh, uh, lots of blue 
lots of green and maybe a little bit of red. What is that going to look like? Well, in order to use this fancy color, we have to use the palette statement. Okay, now the palette statement takes a number of the bucket that you want to overwrite. So in this case, zero. We're going to overwrite the bucket zero uh, with our color. It's an illegal function call, probably because I can't use zero. It's still an illegal function call. Why? Uh, because I can't use palette command before I go to a screen mode, of course. Okay, let's just go to a... Okay. Let's go to screen 12 right first thing. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now we... I think I should be able to do palette zero now. Oh, man. So what just happened? Well... We gave it a new value. We gave zero a new meaning. What was the meaning? It was apparently a green color, a shade of green. Now, every pixel of that color on the screen gets changed. So it wasn't my plan, but all that black space everywhere else was also color zero. Everything gets set to color zero, and so we get this filled in stuff okay well that kind of wasn't great so let's okay there we go <laughs> so you can see the blue on the left side has been changed well woohoo for that that's fantastic now if I wanted it to maybe um, what we're going to do we can actually make this less intense by just changing, decreasing. Let's decrease all the values by 20. And we should see kind of a darker green. Yeah, darker green, darker forest green. So this is how we can make shades of green. Uh, but we've sacrificed the blue. We no longer have the blue. Color one is now this weird shade of green. You say, well, how does that help us? Well, what's interesting is the computer cannot display more than 16 colors at any given time. So if you change the value while things are on screen, everything gets changed. So what do I what do I mean? Well, okay, let's let's not let's put this back to normal. Boom, we got our blue back. And now we are going to wait for a key press. Okay, only after we get a key press are we going to change the palette. So at this point, we have blue. We uh, hit a button, and that blue becomes green. Now, I didn't make any paint commands. I didn't say, you know, draw this box again. I just said, hey, you're showing color one. Well, now color one is a green, okay? Um, and so this is an instantaneous color change. Uh, so what we could actually do is, well, let's try this. Let's, to illustrate this even more, let's get our random number generator back. Okay. Um, just for our purposes, what we'll do is instead of random X's and Y's, mm, you know what, we'll keep, we'll just comment all that out. Let's, um, uh, let's make a hundred random boxes on the screen, okay? Okay, we're going to draw a line from a random number be between 1 and 480. Uh, no, 640. To another random coordinate. Uh, 480. 
and that's a random XY. And we'll do another random XY as well. I don't know what this is actually going to look like. Okay, just one second, folks. Uh, okay, sorry about that, folks. Okay, so we are drawing some <laughs> random rectangles. I don't know what this is actually going to look like, but, uh, and a mod 15. Uh, what does mod mean? Mod is the modulus operator. Um, it's the remainder after dividing, dividing. So, um, let's say my number A was 50. Okay, um, so 50 mod 15 will take 50, it'll divide by 15, um, which is three and a third. Uh, but so it takes that remainder, so it's three remainder five, just like you learned in grade four, um, and it actually throws away the actual whole number and it just gives you the remainder. Anyway, this is a quick way of whatever number you have, you can actually reduce it into another number between one, in this case, and 15. So this is actually a, a more advanced way of cycling th one to 16, one to 16, one to 16, uh, or well, sorry, one to 15, zero to 15. Yeah, zero to 15. Cause if it is 15, the remainder is zero. So that'll be zero. So anyway, that's how we do that. Those are lines. Well, lines are okay, I guess. Uh, let's make them boxes, though. And I already gave it away if you saw it. Okay. This time, though, let's make a thousand of them. There we go. So we've got all these boxes on the screen. They're awesome, and actually they're going to continue to, this is, okay. <laughs> okay, too many, too many. But anyway, I drew all this random nonsense on the screen. Now I'm going to update the palette. Watch the blue at the top of the screen. It changes green. It changes to our shade of green. And so this way... I mean, that's a complicated shape. I couldn't really, I may have been able to paint, use the paint command to fill that oddly shaped shape in. But you'll notice in other areas of the screen, um, anywhere where there was a blue, uh, we updated it to this dark green. And so that's the palette command and woohoo for that. Now, how did I use it in Pong? Well, Let's get rid of this. That was just for demonstration purposes and didn't work out as I really wanted it to. Okay. Okay. So color one becomes green. Okay. Um, now if I set all these to zero, 30, zero, zero, this is going to be a shade of blue. A very very dark shade of blue in fact I can't even make that out I don't think that's uh, interesting 40 it's still black what's going on Something's wrong, folks. That's green. That should be like a gray. Oh no, that's kind of a gross. Why is this, why is this not working? Come on.
That's a brown. What? Okay, hold on. I must be doing something wrong. I'm going to save this as a uh, palette. Let's open up Pong again because it worked in Pong. I'm trying to get shades of blue here. I don't know what's going on. See here I kept in, um, I kept bouncing B. Basically between zero and 58. Well, that should have worked. Oh, you know what? I'll bet. I know what's wrong. I know. Oh, no, that's Pong. Whoops. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, palette. I know what's wrong. Um. <laughs> okay. If I go like this. And make this a single. There we go. You're like, what? I didn't see that change much. Um, and no, no, let's make it. it. It was too close to the actual one. Okay. So hit the button. It's going to get a lot darker. Very much darker. Now you might be asking, why did that percent sign behind the <laughs> variable name matter at all? Um, when the percent sign is there, it's 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 a uh, it's an integer value. You're saying this holds an integer value, but integer values are only, I think they're between zero and thirty-two thousand. So it's another it's another quirk. Uh, we'll save this. It's another quirk. But if I say call um, per percent equals forty thousand. And then I print it to the screen. It's an overflow. You can't do it. And and so when things are an overflow, um, you're 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 not allowed to. You're basically not allowed to. If I wanted to to put forty thousand into a variable, I can put it into a put an ampersand beside it. And I think this tells me that it's a long value. Long values are really long integers. Nice naming system, eh? It just says, look, internally, this is, the programmer has decided this value is, might be pretty darn big. So use more bytes than you would normally to represent it in, in memory. Now the issue, we weren't getting a we weren't getting um, an overflow error, which was interesting. If I do um, the string representation of this integer value, will that work? No, it's just totally an overflow. Curious. Well, when it overflows, it must be doing something that uh, sets it to zero, which is why we were getting our black. It doesn't. That doesn't explain a whole lot, though. Um, see, because when I had this at forty, and this was an integer. That was actually working. So why? Why was that working? It must be the way QBasic is calculating it. Well, let's put a breakpoint there. Uh, debug. Sorry, now I'm curious. Um, I 
I can't remember how to uh, <laughs> trace on. Oh, okay. Um, step. Step is F8. So boom. 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 Let's add a watch. Right now, color is zero. We step over it. So I guess because the function used a function and not a constant value there, um, it said, look, I can't even, I can't, I don't even know what you're talking about trying to put that into a smaller integer variable. So we're just going to keep it at zero. And that's why we get the black. Okay, whatever. That's kind of a funky, funky behavior. Anyway, that is why when I changed it, I want to delete all watch here. When I changed it to a single, that can hold values much, much larger. Um, it can also hold decimals, but it gets what's called casted to uh, the, proper, the proper form uh, when we put it into the palette statement. So this works. Okay. Uh, okay, so now what I can do um <clears throat> I can say keep drawing everything. We'll draw everything and then we're gonna say color equals function and I'm just gonna change the blue value. So here we'll we'll say um, blue equals, let's say 10. Okay. And then we'll use that. So blue is our, the intensity of blue. Um, now let's make it black. Okay. We'll start out our palette one with color so that will start out with black because blue is zero so this color becomes zero that's fine then we'll change the blue value blue equals blue plus one if blue is greater than 64 uh, let's make it 63 then blue equals zero. Okay, color equals our function, that's blue. Here we go. And we'll change the palette. And we'll loop until inky string is not equal to null. Okay. So what this will do is we're going to increase the blue value. If the blue value is too big, then we will reset it back to zero. Um, we will put that through our function, which determines our color number, and then update bucket one with that new color. So because these, this should cycle through all the available blue values. And look at that, it's kind of blinking. It's kind of nice. Let's do a, let's put a, a weight in here. Come on. Uh, why is that even faster? There we go. So even though the blue Oh, it's getting even more intense, more intense. There are 64 different values of blue. And we're not redrawing anything on the screen, and we never at any given time have more than 16 different colors showing. But we are cycling through 64 different colors, different shades of blue. So that's the palette function. Um, and I must have just learned about it uh, when I was writing Pong. And I think it's pretty cool. It, it, it's, a, 
it's a throwback to a lot of um, limitations that old computer games had. Uh, games that you wouldn't even think. So there are lots of YouTube videos um, talking about old Super Mario Brothers games for the NES, for instance. Um, old computer systems, and they had these limitations that you wouldn't really normally recognize as a user. Uh, for instance, in each 8x8 eight eight, uh, square on the screen, there could only be four different colors. Even though the, the rest of the display was showing a lot more colors, in each 8x8 eight eight box, you could only have at most four different colors showing at one time. And you can make some superb artwork that way. I mean, there were these limitations, but you can get around them and make things that look cool. And, and I think having, you know, these, these, these colors that fade in and out and they look like you're probably doing something fancy with, with alpha channels. Uh, no, 16 colors at any given time. We just get to choose what those are. Um, so, uh, the other screen modes work this way as well. So screen 13, um, it did give you 256 buckets, but still the same 256,000 possible colors. It's just that you could uh, have 256 of them at any given time, but you, you sacrificed your screen resolution, of course. So that is the palette function. And I hope my explanation was not dull. I think this is super cool stuff. Uh, I mean, now we can display 16 million colors per pixel. Like, you, you don't have these limitations anymore. Your screen could show 16 million colors at once if you had 16 million pixels available. Like, if, if there are limitations, uh, we certainly, I don't know about them. Um, but the, the most uh, rewarding thing that I can ever recall um, in all of my computer science career, stretching way back to QBasic, is overcoming these restrictions when you have this debilitating restriction on you. How do you accomplish it? How do you, what do you do if you run out of memory? I had to deal with that a lot, especially in, in other projects that are, are coming up in Adventures in Old Code. I kept running out of memory. How am I going to get around that? I can't increase the memory of my computer system. Um, I'm going to have to get some fancy, fancy stuff going on here. So anyway, that's, uh, that is the exciting part about computer science, is overcoming obstacles using your brain. So thanks for joining me in this adventure in old code. Have a nice day, and we will see you next time.